before starting to talk about climate change, first we have to define what is meant with the climate. So climate is in a narrow sense usually defined as the average weather which in the, within a region. So it's a statistical description in terms of the mean and the variability of relevant quantities of a period ranging from months even to thousands or millions of years. Um, today, if we talk about uh, the time period of climate, we talk about the period of 30 years, which is defined by the World Meteorological Organization, WMO. And uh, the quantities which are averaged are, of course, mainly the temperature, the precipitation, and the wind conditions. Uh, additionally, you can also talk about uh, cloudiness factor or cloudiness index, etc. In a wider sense, uh, climate is the state which is including a statistical description of, uh, of a climate system. Let's have a look at some observations and measurements uh, over the past years or even centuries, decades. Um, first, uh, you see two photographs uh, of the Moa Glacier in Alaska in the United States. On the left-hand side, you see the situation on the 13th of August 1941. So this is in summertime. You see the ice, the glacier in this in this valley. And on the right hand side, the photo has taken on the same uh, position. Uh, you see uh, 63 years later, on the 31st of August 2004, uh, the situation has changed significantly. You see the ice has melted, the glacier has melted with this lake within this, this valley. In the background, you see still this, this Moa glacier. Um, and what you can observe is uh, of these, on these two photos, something has significantly changed. Uh, that the, uh, the the temperature must have risen in this region, and um, the ice has melted, and now we have this lake. So um, the climate in this region has uh, changed significantly. The next example shows the cherry blossom date in Japan. Um, this is. Uh, um, a traditional custom of enjoying the transient beauty of uh, flowers, uh, mainly of course the cherry blossom. And uh, this is uh, an important um, indicator as there are documents uh, even uh, far back in time, what you can see uh, on the x-axis, uh, the year. So we have uh, the first documents of the first cherry blossom date uh, beginning the year 800 AD. And uh, each dot represents the cherry blossom date in, in, in Japan. Uh, this red, dark red curve uh, shows the moving average over 30 years, so over one period of average climate. And what can you, uh, what do you see on this on this figure? You see that this uh, flowering date in the city Kyoto in Japan varies between the uh, very late March or beginning of April and uh, of course the late of april even the beginning of, of may so you see there are periods uh, with uh, later cherry blossom dates or earlier ones uh, and what you see is that the average cherry blossom date is between the 8th and the 15th of april um, of course there have been some time periods for example in the um, about 1500 to 1600 so in the 16th century with a later flowering date or even a time period with an earlier uh, flowering date in the 15th century. But what we can observe uh, in, in modern times, so with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution um, globally in the mid of the 19th century, you see uh, that the cherry blossom days shifts uh, to early April, and that is an effect we haven't seen in the last uh, 1,200 years. So again, a second indicator that uh, in Japan the climate seems to change um, and that uh, spring comes more early. The next example shows the phenology clock in Rhineland Platinate in uh, western Germany. Uh, what you can see in this clock is uh, that the, uh, the seasons are changing. Uh, the, the inner circle shows you the situation in the mid of the 20th uh, century, so the average um, seasons, the beginning of the seasons, 
uh, from 1951 to 1980. So see in blue, that's the winter time. The numbers gives you the days. So we have had the winter time of the winter period of 116 days. And then early spring, um, 35 days and, and so on. And if you compare the situation in the mid of the 19th century to the situation we have today, so again, a time period of uh, 30 years, so at the climate uh, period, of modern uh, in the modern definition you see what has changed the winter is, is shorter we have uh, winter which is uh, has just 98 days so the winter in germany is getting shorter the spring early spring starts earlier you can see the sea with the shift uh, spring is coming more early even the summer is becoming more early and autumn is, is even longer so that the winter is, is uh, shorter and this is again uh, the next indicator uh, which shows that the climate seems to change uh, now in, in Germany, that uh, seasons are changing, uh, winter is, is getting shorter, spring, summer and even autumn are getting uh, longer, so something is changing. On the photo on the left hand side, uh, coming from Naser uh, Earth Observatory, you see three uh, hurricanes uh, in uh, September 2017. Uh, two of these are major hurricanes which are getting closer to land and hitting the coast of the United States. You, see, you can see here Florida uh, and the south coast of the United States. And what can also be observed is that the extreme weather events globally are increasing. The number of events is increasing. You can see this here on this figure in the upper right hand side. Um, that the number of extreme weather events is, is getting uh, larger. And also uh, the number or the annual losses due to these extreme weather events coming from droughts, uh, from icing, from blizzards, from hurricanes, uh, heavy rain flooding etc is increasing you can see here all these dots represent the annual uh, losses in billion us dollars uh, of course they are uh, years with a very large value but overall the average you see this increase within the last um, 40 years that uh, the, the annual losses globally have risen from uh, let's say um, 40 to 50 billion us dollars up to uh, in average 150 or even 200 billion US dollars. So the costs are increasing. Um, so again, there isn't a change globally that there are uh, more severe weather events and the costs are rising. So these uh, examples show that on uh, different locations uh, on Earth, we observe uh, changes in the climate, that nature is changing. Um, that we observe uh, extreme weather events. So the question is, can we explain uh, these observations uh, or do we find more measurements or can we do some measurements to identify the reason why this might occur? First of all, what we can do is take a look at the global average temperature. Uh, you see here in this diagram, the temperature from 1850 to 2018. Uh, and what you see is uh, the temperature in degrees Celsius relative to the average temperature of the time period of uh, 1961 to 1990, so a time period of three years. So that is the our time period, just to define that that's uh, zero degrees. And you see if you are going back in time uh, until the mid of the 19th century, uh, we see that the temperature globally, or the mean temperature has been uh, smaller than our um, time period of 30 years, that the uh, average temperature has been between uh, minus 0.6 and 0.2 degrees Celsius, so smaller. And then we have this increase of temperature with this plateau in the mid of the 20th century. And uh, with the beginning of the 1980s, we see a steady increase of the temperature. Uh, that uh, today we have reached a temperature of uh, plus uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 deg degrees uh, compared to our mean um, period of uh, 30 years from 1961 to 1990. So we can see that the temperature is rising um, and uh, this, is, this process is, is continued. 
so the temperature of, of, of Earth is, is increasing. The increase of temperature can be observed all over uh, Earth. You see now six diagrams for uh, six different locations on Earth. Um, so the temperature increase within the last century, beginning with the uh, year 91 uh, in the United States, in uh, Germany and China, so the northern hemisphere, and on the other end in the southern hemisphere, Brazil, Nigeria, in, in Africa and Australia. And what you can observe is that this increase of the temperature is not a local um, phenomenon that just a few parts of Earth might increase, the, or you can observe the increase of temperature. This is a global effect which can be observed all over the world. You see, for example, in the United States, uh, in the beginning of the century, the small increase of the mean temperature, then a slight decrease in the mid, and then this increase with the beginning of the 1980s. Similar situation can be seen in Germany, in Central Europe, um, as well as uh, in, in China. So you see two waves of temperature increase in the beginning of the 20th century, and then this slight decrease in the mid of the 20th century, and then this fast increase of the temperature uh, of plus one or even 1.5 degrees Celsius. And this can be seen on the southern hemisphere as well. So in Brazil, we see this fast increase of the temperature at the end of the 20th century. century. The increase in Nigeria is also um, measurable and of course in Australia. So uh, although we are observing different regions with a different base uh, line temperature, uh, you see this, this, this temperature increase is a global phenomenon. And um, so you can't say, oh, that this is just a local effect and somewhere else on Earth, uh, we see a decrease of the global temperature. Um, if you take a look at the measurements of the atmospheric temperature, you see this increase uh, of the temperature globally. This uh, global effect of temperature increase can be seen on this map provided by the National Centers for Environmental Information, NOAA. What you can see here is the land and as well the ocean temperature departure from the average for the year 2019 with respect to the base period from 1981 to 2010. Uh, and what you can see is that uh, the red colors represent higher temperatures, blue colors represent smaller temperatures compared to this base period. And you can see that mostly all over the, all over the, uh, the planet we have this uh, higher temperatures uh, in, in the year 2019, in particular in uh, Central Europe. You see here in the north, uh, eastern part in Siberia or in, in Russia, significantly higher temperatures. Um, of course, there are regions uh, in this year 2019 which uh, have a smaller temperature. That's, that's of course, uh, always occurring that we have regions with um, smaller temperatures. But overall, you see this increase of the temperature uh, compared to this base, uh, base period. And uh, you see that this is a global effect. We can observe, we can measure and uh, that can be found for all years that uh, if you take the base period from 1961 to uh, 1990 as the reference period or the baseline for our mean temperature you see that uh, all over the world we see continuously increasing temperatures um, so that's a global effect uh, in particular if you take uh, the mean over uh, several years uh, or even uh, four or three years up to now, we've just had a look at the temperatures within the last uh, decades or the last two centuries. And of course, the temperature on Earth has changed significantly within the last period. So what you can see on this figure is the temperature on the y-axis over uh, the time periods. On the x-axis, you see we can go back in time even 500 million years before present. So the question is, where do we get the information uh, about Earth temperature? So this is a part of the paleoclimatology. Um, so you can derive uh, the temperature, uh, which is uh, used by data analysis or 
derived by data analysis uh, coming from uh, the analysis of rocks, sediments, or boreholes. You can analyze ice sheets or tree rings, even the corals and shells or microfossils. Uh, and combining um, the growth uh, of uh, biomass uh, and uh, the information in, in, in sediments, uh, you can get the information of what has been the temperature in the past. And what you can see, of course, is uh, in the uh, in the years uh, close to to the present, you see this Holocene uh, period. You see this is a rather constant temperature. This is our reference temperature. Um, and then going back in time, the last ice age we have had on Earth, so the temperature has been smaller. And uh, keep this in mind, so during the last age, uh, ice age we've observed uh, on Earth, uh, 20,000 years before present, uh, the global te mean temperature has been 4 degrees smaller than, than today. So just 4 degrees uh, less than today we have had this uh, ice age um, period. And then going further back in time, you see these ups and downs uh, in this uh, Pleistocene uh, period. Uh, so higher temperatures and smaller temperatures. Of course, there has been always been the change of temperature, and the change has been rather fast. But keep this uh, scale of the axis in mind. So the change, for example, in this case, uh, has been occurred within um, thousands of years. So this is not a change. Uh, of, of temperature within years or decades we are observing at the moment. So this increase we observing at the moment, this increase of plus, uh, plus 4 degrees, which is um, um, outlook for the future or the expectation of the future, this increase is so fast we have never observed this fast increase of temperature on Earth before. This increase uh, or this these peaks you can observe here in this period um, one million years before present, this has been uh, observed or the change of temperature was in, within thousands of years. And then if you go back in time, uh, you see that we have had periods with even a very high temperatures. Um, you see uh, 100 million years ago, we have temperatures would have been uh, 10 or even 12 degrees uh, above the mean temperature we are observing at the moment. Um, so Earth looked totally different, uh, a lot of uh, trees and plants, uh, large animals, large insects, so, uh, a lot of swamps. Uh, so Earth looked totally different, there has been no ice uh, in, this, um, in this time period. And then if you even go back further in time, uh, you see here uh, this higher temperature plus 10 or even uh, the time periods uh, with uh, 300 million years before present, which has been even uh, smaller, so minus 4 degrees compared to uh, the, the temperature we observe today. Um, so again, we have had the changes that's uh, typical and that's not a problem for, uh, for Earth. Of course, nature has to adopt to these conditions, um, but the change of the conditions is rather slow, so that it takes uh, uh, thousands of years until the earth temperature changes uh, f uh, within these um, regions of plus two or even plus four plus uh, five degrees celsius and uh, if the temperature is changing too fast nature isn't able to adopt and that may cause uh, severe problems uh, for nature so what we have observed is up to now that we can observe uh, changes in nature um, all over the world. We see that the temperature is increasing all over the world on all locations on Earth. Uh, the question is now, can we identify the reason or develop an idea where this comes from? And what we can observe is that the concentration of carbon dioxide, so CO2, in the Earth's atmosphere has been risen. Uh, or increasing continuously since uh, 8050. So what you can see on the right hand side, uh, these are modern measurements at the Mauna Loa station on Hawaii and the Pacific Ocean. You see in, in blue that's the annual uh, mean CO2 concentration in ppm. So ppm means parts per million. So if you have one million uh, atmospheric molecules in this case, 300 of these molecules are uh, carbon dioxide. 
And we, on the one hand, you see in blue, that's the, the annual average. And in green, you see the, the season. So uh, during summertime, we have a smaller concentration uh, due to absorption of carbon dioxide by the plants uh, due to the photosynthesis. And in winter time, uh, you see this increase of concentration. So there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, but overall, you see this in continuous increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And if you go back in time, you can see this on the uh, figure on the left-hand side. This is the CO2 concentration within the last 800,000 years uh, before today. You see, this is the situation we are uh, facing today. We have a uh, CO2 concentration of 400 ppm. And in the last 800,000 years, so uh, data taken from uh, boreholes and ice sheets, you can derive what has been the CO2 concentration in the past on the history of, of Earth. And you see, of course, we have had these changes in the in the CO2 concentration, the ups and downs between 200 and, let's say, 300 ppm. But at the moment, what, what we observe is this fast increase on the one hand and the absolute values on the other hand. We haven't seen this in the last 800,000 years. So, again, there's a significant change uh, of... Uh, the global system, uh, the CO2 concentration is rising and this might or this uh, causes uh, other effects we can observe today. And what you can do now is uh, that you can compare the uh, ups and downs uh, of the global temperature and the change of the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. Uh, and what you can see here in this figure are the values of the temperature change um, compared to the present uh, situation. Uh, so that's in, in red is the temperature and in green that is the CO2 concentration in parts per million taken from the Epica Dome Sea ice core in the Antarctica, so on the South Pole. And you see this uh, very good correlation uh, between the change of the temperature and the carbon dioxide concentration. You see if the CO2 concentration rises, uh, you see also that the temperature is, is also rising. Um, and if the uh, we have if, if this CO2 concentration concentration is rather small, then also the temperature is rather small. For example, uh, the last ice age we have had a CO2 concentration on the Earth about at about 200 ppm and a temperature which has been uh, minus four or minus, uh, minus five degrees Celsius. So a significantly smaller temperature. Um, and uh, of, of course, this is um, an indicator that the carbon dioxide and temperature is correlated um, all over the world. So if we have higher concentrations uh, of carbon dioxide, then temperature is rising. Uh, if the uh, concentration is small, the temperature on Earth is smaller. So carbon dioxide must be a molecule which influences uh, the temperature on Earth. And uh, next, what we want to understand is why carbon dioxide can influence uh, the global uh, temperature. Before talking about uh, the influence of carbon dioxide on the atmosphere and the so-called greenhouse effect, uh, what we can observe is that there are other molecules which are accumulating in the surf in, in, in the atmosphere. Uh, what you can see here in the upper figure again, this is the carbon dioxide concentration on Earth at the beginning of uh, the um, in the mid of the 18th century. So we have a constant concentration of about uh, 280 ppm, and then this increase of the concentration. Uh, beginning in the mid of the uh, 19th century and you can observe as well the increase of the concentration of methane so CH4 uh, measured in ppb so parts per billion uh, so we have this increase of the uh, methane concentration uh, in, in the surface and even nitrous oxide N2O uh, is also increasing so we have started with the beginning of the industrial revolution uh, in the mid of the 18th century with a concentration of 270 uh, ppb and again an increase of the concentration so at the moment we are at let's say 330 ppb so three molecules um, which my or which which interfere the temperature 
which are responsible for the greenhouse effect um, on Earth. And so the concentration is increasing um, of all of these uh, molecules and they influence the temperature on Earth uh, significantly. Let's have a look at more observations. So after talking about uh, the temperature and the concentration of these molecules, carbon dioxide, uh, methane and nitrous oxide, uh, the next observation on the one hand is uh, the, the ice. So we, what we can observe is that the, the ice mass is uh, shrinking. Um, in, on the North Pole and on the South Pole, you can see here in the upper figure, that is the, the ice mass of the Antarctica uh, and in, in Greenland, so South Pole and the North Pole, uh, with the loss of uh, ice mass in gigatons. So you see we have lost a lot of uh, ice mass due to the increase of, of uh, the atmospheric temperature, of course. Uh, so at the moment, uh, the Antarctica is losing in, in average about 150 gigatons per year and the annual loss on, in Greenland is uh, even larger, 280 gigatons. So of course there are periods which an increase of uh, the, the ice mass, but overall we see this, this decrease or this ice melting. Uh, and uh, again, an observation that something is, something is changing. On the other hand, in the picture on the bottom, you see the sea level in a dark blue, the means global sea level in, in light blue, the confidence intervals shown um, from the, the end of the 19th century up to now. And what you see is that the ice level is changing. Um, you see this the, the, the level in millimeters. So the sea level is increasing all over the world at the moment uh, in average we see this sea level rise of 3.3 millimeters per year of course that's a small value just 3.3 millimeters per year but that's a global effect uh, we can observe uh, on the one hand of course uh, one reason is of course the ice melting and uh, this this ice fills the oceans and we see this increase and second issue is that uh, the warmer the water is, the more volume it, it, it has uh, due to the density. And um, if uh, something is getting warmer, uh, the volume is increasing as well. This is of course also as well for, for water. And that's a second issue that if the water is getting warmer, um, the sea level also is rising. And this is a process we can observe all over the world. And this increase of uh, the sea level can also be observed if we take a look at the heat content which is stored in the oceans. Um, what you can see on this diagram is the heat or the amount of heat which is stored on, on, on the land, atmosphere in the ice, that this orange um, part of the curve. But most of the heat uh, the heat increase, the increase of the temperature is stored in the oceans. Uh, you can see here in this blue color, so this is a separation on the one hand, the upper layers of the oceans up to a depth of uh, 700 meters, and then um, the layers uh, 700 to 2000 meters um, uh, below the sea level. So we see with the beginning or the, the mid of the 20th century, you see this increase of the heat content. So there's a lot of heat uh, which uh, on the one hand of course increases the temperature uh, of the atmosphere but also the oceans are getting warmer and warmer um, so uh, and water of course has a higher heat capacity so water can store more heat than the air as a gas so there's a lot of heat at the moment you see this this values of uh, 20 times 10 to the 22nd joule which are stored in the oceans which of course is a problem as on the one hand uh, the water uh, of the oceans is, is uh, increasing or the temperature is increasing of the water. Uh, this on the one hand leads to an increase as higher temperatures leads to an increase of the volume. That's one reason for the sea level rise. And of course uh, if the water is getting warmer that causes uh, or can cause uh, hurricanes which are more powerful as if the water is, is warmer, uh, more water uh, 
can expand to the atmosphere and we get more water vapor in in the uh, in the atmosphere and this water vapor can accumulate to hurricanes and even if the if the atmosphere if the air is warmer the, the air can also store more heat and this heat is stored in uh, water wa vapor in the atmosphere and this um, leads to uh, more or can lead to more powerful hurricanes uh, if they are uh, containing more energy more water and if they hit, uh, hit uh, the land or the coastline they are more powerful and can cause severe damages so again this is uh, a next indicator that something is, is changing uh, that the heat content of the oceans is increasing uh, within the last uh, decades one idea can be of course that uh, the sun is the reason for these uh, changes we observe on earth so uh, one parameter to derive uh, the strength of the solar radiation is uh, the number of sunspots which can be observed so on this diagram what you see on the one hand is the number of uh, sunspots in yellow which of course you see this periods of uh, 14 years um, you see these ups and downs. That's typical for the sun. So the sun, as a star, is rather is in rather stable conditions. Um, and uh, what you can also see is uh, the uh, on the one hand the temperature uh, change um, in in red and this carbon dioxide concentration in in green. And what you can see is that in the uh, mid of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century. Uh, there are there's no significant change of the temperature uh, you see the slight increase we've talked about and you see this increase of the carbon dioxide concentration this uh, increase uh, up to 400 uh, ppm and more but we see this decoupling uh, from the annual uh, sunspots you see the sunspots are um, still varying between uh, close to zero and 150 or even 200 sunspots there is no in the last decades there is no significant increase of the sunspots so there is no increase of the solar radiation within the last decades which can be the main reason for the increase of the temperature you see this correlation um, between temperature and carbon dioxide so the increase of both curves so if you take a look at this uh, correlation between on the one hand the sun activity and the change of uh, temperature uh, if we take the data from 1850 to 2018 you see there is no uh, clear correlation um, you see on the x-axis that's the temperature change compared to the time period 1951 to 1980 and uh, yellow uh, the you can see the annual number of sunspots and on the left hand side you see the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere and what you clearly can see is that the carbon dioxide concentration marked with these um, green dots there's an increase so if the carbon dioxide concentration increases then the temperature is in increasing uh, smaller carbon dioxide concentration uh, leads to a smaller temperatures um, but you don't see any correlation uh, between the annual number of sunspots or the, uh, the solar radiation or the activity of the sun and the temperature change. Um, so the sun is not the main driver for temperature increase. Um, there are other reasons which can be uh, clearly understood um, due to the greenhouse effect. Uh, so carbon dioxide and all the other greenhouse gases, methane, nitrous oxide, um, water vapor, are responsible for the temperature increase, but uh, not uh, the activity of the sun. If you summarize what we have seen up to now, if you have just a look at the measures, at the observations uh, all, over, uh, all over the planet, what you can see is that uh, on the one hand, the temperature are the temperatures are rising over land. That the marine air temperature is rising, the sea surface temperature is rising. The heat content of the oceans is increasing. The sea level is rising uh, all over the Earth. On the other hand, we can observe that the sea ice area on the North Pole and the South Pole, or Greenland and Antarctica, is decreasing. 
the snow cover all over the earth is, is decreasing as well as the glacier volume is decreasing so the glaciers are melting all over the earth and finally what we can observe is that the water vapor concentration is rising the air temperature in the troposphere is rising all over the earth and the concentration of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide methane uh, nitrous oxide as well as water vapor is increasing so the concentration of these greenhouse gases are increasing uh, so that's uh, up to now just just the measures or the observations that something is changing very fast within the last decades on earth uh, although of course there has been a climate change in the past periods going back millions of years back in time there has been this ups and downs of the carbon dioxide concentration of uh, the global temperature of course but uh, from the human point of view and uh, our perspective we see that there are there are changes which are very fast um, and they are as fast as never been observed in the past uh, and that of course uh, leads to severe changes in nature um, as nature has to adopt to the new condition and still we, we see that we haven't reached a plateau the, 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 all the measures are still changing very fast and um, next what we want to do is we want to understand where does this come from uh, what are the physical reasons um, uh, can we understand why this is happening and then finally what we want to have a look at is uh, what is the perspective what is the future outlook uh, what will be happening within the next years decades and centuries with the planet uh, if we continue uh, what we are doing at the moment